God knows you. He knows what you're thinking, what you just thought, and what you're about to think. He knows everything there is to know about you. He created you. He knit you together. You are exactly what He wanted you to be. And when the world tells you that you don't matter, that you aren't smart enough, that you aren't pretty enough or strong enough, just remember who created you. And when you feel like you've really messed up and nothing seems to make sense anymore, remember that the God that created the whole entire universe created you too. And you are exactly the person he wanted you to be. particular guy, if I could find this particular woman, if I could get through this and we think, then I will have a ride. Then, then I will have a ride. I was joking, I guess it's because what Monique said, because she was wishing me happy Mother's Day after I wished her happy Mother's Day. Uh, I was going to accept it, but anyway, and then, uh, I was telling Shane, you know, uh, that boys, you know, were sometimes rough, and I said, I know that because I said I was one, and somewhat still am. I said, I don't know if I'm, if I'm a man or not. I said, you think after four girls, you'd know if he's a man or not. And she said, well, I think you're on your way. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we think we get these ideas of when is it enough? When, when is it that you have done it? When, when, when am I good enough? When, when is it that I have all my ducks in a row and God can really use me? And what's so awesome about that video is, is that we can put ourselves in those people's box, right? We think as long as I can do this, or if I can do this, or I can do this, then I have a I, I will have a ride. I will have it completed. Then God can really use me. It's then that I can really focus on God. It's then that I can really focus on my family. It's then that I can really just put everything else aside and do what God wants me to do. Right? Y'all think that, right? I do. And then I got this idea that I'm not good enough. Y'all ever suffered with that? That you're not good enough? You aren't prettier than us. You don't have muscles in us. You don't have enough money. You're not good enough. And then we start judging ourselves, everybody is like, man, if I could have muscles like a ladder, okay, then, man, then I'd be bad, right? Dude, so, but then, then if, I could, if I could just have the mother skills of that woman, or if I could have a marriage like those people, or if I, could, if I could make money like that, if I could drive that kind of car, and if we do this a lot, we think that we're not good enough. And then we fall into this trap that we can't forgive ourselves because we can't get past who we are. <laughs> but wait, we talked about that last week, right? About forgiveness. Last week was tough. The hardest mess I ever, ever delivered. Because it is so tough. I've heard back from a bunch of you this week that have actually went out and actually lived that out this week and actually forgave. It's liberating. So why, what do we get left with? How, how is it that God, that God can use us? We look at ourselves and all we see, when I look at myself, you know what I see? A pile of mess. That's what I see. When I look at myself, you know, that's what I see. I see a pile of mess. But there's this verse that is so important and I want you to underline it. I want you to write it down. I, I want you to remember this verse. This verse is key. When I remembered this verse, when I heard this verse, it changed my life. This one verse. Because this one verse is so powerful, yet so simple. And I absolutely love this verse. It is so, to me, it's awesome. This, this one verse 
It's right here. For with God, and I, I, I love this word right here, for with God, nothing, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. Nothing. That's Luke 137. With God, nothing is impossible. And then I thought, okay, that's great. I'm going to hang on to this verse, right? I'm going to hang on to this verse. Nothing. For with God, nothing is impossible. But then I started, I started analyzing it. And I was thinking, oh, but but my dad skills, that's that's not that's not so good at all. I'm going through school, but that that's that's impossible. Or I got this really, really tough thing coming up, or I gotta deal with this really tough family member. And then what I was started doing, I was taking that nothing and I was kind of separating it out and saying, this is possible with God, but this stuff over here is not impossible. But guess what the word nothing means? Now I, I've looked it up, I've Googled it. I've looked up in the Webster's Dictionary. I, I have searched endless hours on the word nothing. And here's where I come to the conclusion of what nothing means. Are y'all ready? Here's what nothing means in all languages across the world. Nothing means nothing. nothing. <laughs> Did you get that? So when he said, for nothing, nothing is impossible. God, nothing. Guess what that means? Nothing. nothing. I love that verse. Because there's this one thing that I want you to hit you with today on Mother's Day. This is so important. So important. And that is when we do what God wants us to do, because He wants us to do it, you are unstoppable. I want you to get that. When you do what God wants you to do, because He wants you to do it, you are unstoppable. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Now, we just got to talk about all this Mission Impossible stuff. You know, we're talking about Easter and all that. And I love Mission Impossible. I got a man that she watched one with me the other night. It's Mission Impossible 2, and then I watched 3, and then they got this new one coming. I love Mission Impossible. It's awesome. When you got, it's kind of weird time at church, but you got these thieves that are trying to go in and, and steal something. You know? It's just cool because they got all these neat gadgets. They can see through walls, and they can hear crickets in eight countries away. I mean, they're like awesome. It's cool. They got. All the spy stuff, it's cool. They can just jump out of a window and it's like these little flaps come out of their arms and they're like a flying squirrel. It's like, <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. But guess is what it means, okay? <clears throat> Nothing is impossible with God. So when you do what God wants you to do because He wants you to do it, you are unstoppable. <coughs> what in the world does that mean? What in the world does that mean? I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter 1. Because there's going to be this awesome, awesome story. We're going to talk about three incredible women today. So on Mother's Day, we're talking about three incredible women. Three incredible women. And these are three women heroes of the Bible, in my opinion. These are three awesome, awesome chicks. And they are just doing some, I said Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 2, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 2. I love this. We're just going to look at these three women, and we're going to look how they believe God for the apostles. It's awesome. Exodus chapter 2. And this first woman is just absolutely incredible. And I'm going to give you a little background before we read this here. Because what was, what was supposed to happen, they had this evil king, right? And this evil king was scared of all these Jews. So what he said was, he said, God, any time you see one of these babies being born, I want you to kill them. I want you to kill them. Kill all the baby boys. That's what you want to do, kill them all. And then that wouldn't get done. He said, then he told, went and told the midwives. They didn't have go to the emergency room for whatever they had these midwives and said listen whenever you see this baby boy we want you to take the boy we want you to chuck him in the river so that they'll live around and they'll die that way they'll stop this nation will stop growing so everybody was supposed to do this they're supposed to kill the baby boys and if you got caught not killing your baby boy you lost your life it's pretty significant so you come to Exodus chapter 2 and this is what we're getting at now Exodus chapter 2 now a man from the family of Levi married a Levite woman the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with asphalt and with pitch. And she placed the child in it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Then his sister stood at the distance in order to see what would happen to him. I don't know how many times that I have read this story over and over and over and over. And you guys have heard this. My girls know it. You know it. We all know it. Moses, baby knows Moses in the basket and all. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, right? 
until you actually start thinking about it. First of all, she could have lost her life. But she took it and she hid him. She did all she could. She hid this boy. Until he started to get older. I can imagine his cries instead of those being those little cute little whimpers, you know. It's just, you know, when the, this, this little tiny baby is just, they're not even crying. It's like when they're crying, it's, it's just funny because they could just be crying and you just better look at them like, that's so cute. Now when they get about three months, that crying and making those long start to rebel, it comes to this God awful scream of death. It is the most. I would rather listen to Cats Meow than hear that that bad, right? It's like, you gotta stop. So I can imagine back at that time, she's thinking, okay, these people are gonna start to hear this. They're gonna turn me in, right? So she did as long as she could, she hid this child. And then she does something absolutely crazy, okay? She took this basket. Now, I don't know if it looked just like this or had a nice handle on it, but she took a basket, right? So she had this basket. She had this basket. Now, I love my kids. You love your kids. You love them. And this woman was nuts because what she did, she took this basket, and in there it says asphalt. You know, she slides so that way it wouldn't leak because, you know, there's holes in there. So she took this basket, right? She had this nice pretty basket. And I can imagine you know, the way you do it with kids, you know. You take it, you're going to make it all nice and fluffy. There you go. All nice and fluffy. So she had it. She's like, okay, there it is. Three months old. She has this basket. And then she takes the baby. This is this little baby dog. Three months old. It's going to be much bigger than this, okay. She takes this baby. And she lays him in there. This is, this is where this kind of gets a little crazy, okay? Because she takes this baby in the Nile River. Big river. I mean, there's like snakes and alligators and dinosaurs in there. It's like, there's stuff in there. So she takes this baby. And she sits him right here. And you know what she does? She goes home. Her, her, her baby is here in the basket, and she leaves and goes home. Did you see who stuck around? Who stuck around? His sister stuck around. His sister, her name is Mary. And she stuck around, and she was hiding over here in the bushes to see what would happen to her. Now, I don't know what it's like just to let your kids go. Our older moms might know a little bit about that. But here's what I would do, okay? If this was my baby... Here's what I would do. I would check on it, right? So what I would do is that I would get me some wicked awesome rope. And here's what I would do. With that. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. There's, there's my baby. So what I'm going to do is, if it was me, I would tie this rope, right? And I would put it around. And so what I would do is I would let, I would let the baby go. But I would keep a check on it so I could, I could bring in. Oh, you okay? Oh, it's time. God's got this. It's okay. And I was praying right over here. And I was praying I'd stake it down. There ain't no way I'm going to the house. Right? Now, I know that my brother loves me. And I know, I know that. And I know that my mom trusts my brother, but there is no way that I would let a sibling, hey, will you stay here and just watch and check out what happens to baby Moses? Would you, would, would you do that? None of that conversation. She did she chucks the baby in the basket and she leaves and goes home. This is what I do. I guarantee you that in our lives, this is what we do. Right? Have you ever heard that, that uh, expression told to some parents or whatever, or maybe some kids, cut the cord? We were talking about the other day. Cut the cord! <laughs> cut the cord. They're talking about the biblical cord. You know, cut the cord. You know, here's what we're Take it. Oh, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Dads are, dads are a, lot, a lot better at this than moms because when, the, when one of our kids, when we're watching them, like they're following the regular bicycle, and the mom, I caught the gasp of death. Y'all know what that is? The, oh, you know, it's, that, that, that's, I hate that sound too. But that, that's worse than everything else. It's like, listen, if you would calm down, they're okay. Just calm down. They'll be wrecking down a bicycle, falling down the right stairs, and you're like, Okay, get up, shake it off. Like I got a big knock come out of the side of the shake it off. But not moms. What do moms do? 
for Marjorie to come up, okay? Wipe you off. Wipe your tears off. That's what all they're good for. Here I am over there going, ah, oh, they're all right. <laughs> Gosh, she let, she let him go. She let him go. She, she let him go. Now here's why this ties in with all this. She does something that she was not supposed to do. She believed God for something great. Now, it, it still doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? But get this. Where would we be without Moses? Where would we? See, Moses was the one who just a few years later, he messed up bad. You know what he did? He killed a dude. He did. He killed a guy, got scared for his life, and he ran out into the desert. And you know what he became? A sheep herder. He was there watching some sheep. And then one day God spoke to him and said, Moses, I got a job for you. And he was the very one who led this nation out of slavery. He was the very one who had that wicked awesome staff that came in and parted the waters. He was the very one who prayed down as bread for God right now. Where would we be about Moses? All because she believed God for something great. Great. Greater than just, I'm not going to give in to this. I'm not going to give in to this person. I'm not going to give in to this king. Who is this king that he is? Who does your problems think they are? Your enemies? Those giants of failure that stand down with you? Who do I think they are? Nothing to God. Look, they're supposed to chuck the babies and kill them all, but yet she did not. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to believe God. With God, nothing is impossible. What does nothing mean? Nothing. Nothing. And here she goes and she does this. I think this is pretty awesome. I think this is pretty awesome. Because all because this one woman believed God. Look at the millions, millions of lives that were changed. Millions. It's estimated that, that when they came up out of Egypt, that's estimated that there was a million Jews. One million. And one man changed the fate of that nation. If you back that up, one mother believed God. Don't you dare say that you moms are important. Don't you dare say that changing diapers is important. Don't you dare say sitting up and doing homework is important. It's the most important job you got. Don't you dare say that you're not qualified, that you're not good enough. Don't you dare. You're awesome. Where would we be without moms? We wouldn't be here. There's this other lady that she had this amazing story. Turn to that, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1. Because I want to look at this, and this is, this is pretty awesome. There is this woman, uh, her name is Hannah. And uh, Hannah has this unique story because they're practicing something that we don't do now. Okay, They, they practice polygamy. And she had uh, this husband, and her husband also had another wife. Now, they didn't live in separate states. They lived in the same house. I'm sure they shared separate beds, but they lived in the same house, and they just... They lived together. There was this woman and this other woman sharing one husband. I don't know how the details and all that work, but that's what it was. But Hannah, she had no kids. She, she didn't have any at all. But this other woman, she did have kids. And she rubbed it in her face and she did all the time like, nah, 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 nah. I got kids and you don't. Nah, nah. I'm, I'm the pride of my husband's joy. I gave him, I gave him sons and daughters. And you know, it's back and forth, back and forth. And then that's where we'll pick this up. And I'm just going to read these couple verses. If you get a chance, I encourage you to read the whole story. This whole chapter is awesome. But in verse 19 is what I want, I want to read. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 10. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. This is Hannah, deeply hurt. Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept with many tears, making a vow. She pleaded, Lord of hosts, if you will take notice of your servant's affliction, remember and not forget me, and give your servant a son. I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And his hire will never be cut. This is one awesome story about one awesome woman who believed God. 
who, who believe God. Again, I really want you to get this. When we do what God wants us to do because He wants us to do it, you are unstoppable. All she wanted, all she wanted was a boy. That's all she wanted. And I knew it was a boy because she says, listen, if you'll give him to me, I will give him back to you. She wanted a boy. That's what she wanted. She wanted a son. And she was hurt. Hurt. And then God said, if you read that whole chapter, she prayed and she fasted and she went up to the Lord. I love that word. Deeply hurt. She was moved. She wasn't just randomly praying. She was actively seeking God. And she said, God, hear me. Hear me. And she got this awesome prayer. Now here's what's, here's what's crazy, okay? God heard her prayer. God heard her prayer. And I think that this is awesome. This is awesome. Just, this is verse 19. The next morning, Elkanah, which is her husband, and Hannah, they got up early to bow and worship before the Lord. Afterward, they returned home to Ramah. And I love this. Okay. Then Elkanah was intimate with his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. And after some time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel because she said, I requested him from the Lord. I love this story. I love it. I love it. One thing about this is that we take the, the part of marriage and intimacy and our, our world has completely and, and taken sex and transported it to something that is completely not what God ever intended. And I love this because they come together and they were intimate together and, and, and God remembered the, the, His prior request. He, he remembered Hannah. And that's what He says that she conceived. I love that. He gave birth to this son. She got exactly what she prayed for. She did that. She did that. And what did she ask for? A son. And that's exactly what she got. was this awesome son. Now, God bless you with this child. And guys, I really want you to understand this. When we do what God wants us to do because He wants us to do it, we become unstoppable. Because think of this. What do we do without Samuel? See, Samuel was the one who went up to these kings. His first king was King Saul. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. King Saul, he anointed him king of Israel. And then just a few, it wasn't very long, long later, he was the very one who anointed David. He was the, the counselor, the advisor, the prophet. He was the voice piece of God. Is that awesome? All because this woman, deeply moved, prayed to God, and God heard her cry. This is kind of funny that we're talking about. These, these two awesome women, that their relationship with God and doing what God wants them to do has to do with childbearing, right? These both are doing something God never spoke to them and said, Hannah, I want you to pray to me so that way I can give you a child. We don't ever see that. You ever see God speaking to Moses' mom? Now listen, uh, okay. Moses' mother's name is like Joshua, man. It's something really, really weird. The Bible names are funny. I don't, don't ever go to the Bible name the kids. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that even. Just be careful where you go to because there's... You're a uh, There's just some crazy names in the Bible. Uh, crazy names in the Bible. But God ever spoke to her and said, Moses is small. Uh, we now to do something very strategic here. I got some of the big plans in store for Moses now. We got, we got to make sure that we do this right. I, I want to take. She never once got any word from God about doing this. This, God never told her to do this. He did. He never told her to do this. God never told Hannah. God never told Hannah. Hannah, I want you to seek me and I want you to pray. I want you to fast to me so that I'll bless you with a child. She did it on her own. She did all she could. Again, I'm going to go back to that Luke 137. For with God, nothing is impossible. That just means that God will give us the desires of our heart. We seek Him. Now, I'm not trying to be one of those people that says, oh, all you got to do is seek God and we'll just lay it all out for you. Guys, it is tough. Okay? Even when God gives you what you want, it's tough. Because you know what Hannah did? She gave her son up. She weaned him after he got grown. And here's what she did. She went to the temple. She says, okay. Eli was the priest there. He said, here's my boy. He's now yours. He's yours. And you know what she did? She went home. See the similarity here between her and Moses? She went home. She left her son in the care of somebody else. Would, would you guys ever do that? No. You wouldn't. You would not do that. You would never do that. 
But this was the deal she made with God. And she did all she could. All she could. And she took her son to the church and left him there. Left him there. Now, the church there is not like church that we might think of as very gruesome. They sacrificed animals and they had to cut their throats and drain all their blood and cook it. I mean, it was pretty nasty stuff. And she left her son right there. But Samuel, when he was just a boy, he started hearing from God. God started to speak to this boy. Where it would be without him and her investment in her son. There's somebody else I want to look at. I know I'm looking at this really quick because I'm coming to the main point. I, I, I really just want you to follow me through this. This is awesome. Okay. Luke chapter 1. Let's take your Bible turn to Luke chapter 1. And this is this is awesome. Luke chapter 1. Uh, this is my favorite chapter of the Bible. This is also my favorite verse in all the Bible that we read. Now this is a few verses. I want you to hang with me because I want to read all this, okay? Now I want you to hear the story that goes on. I want you to hear this conversation. In chapter 1, and we're going to look down at the, the 26th verse. Okay? Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee called Nashville to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favorite woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Verse 30. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son. And he will call his name Jesus. He will be great. And he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over his house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, how can this be since I have not been intimate with the man? Verse 35. Then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Verse 36. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called childless. And guys, listen. For nothing will be impossible with God. Verse 38. I am the Lord's slave, said Mary. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel left her. Again, I absolutely love this story. Because you've got this woman who's engaged. And she gets a visit from this angel, right? Now, I would think that would be pretty wicked and awesome if this angel had come down and said, oh, this angel is coming down and speaking to me. It's going to give me this nice, encouraging word. You know how your parents do before you get married to come down and say, hey, just want to let you know we got you back in anything. We're going to be here to support you. Whatever you need, it's going to be all good. You can do it. You know these encouraging words. But this angel came down and said, hey, uh, you're pregnant. Uh, by God, uh, not by uh, your fiance. And you're like, thanks. And she's like, how can this be? I, I've never been with a man. Nice wedding gift, right? Now, uh, uh, these three women were looking at the first two. God did not speak in their lives. I want you to get this. God did not speak in their lives. But here, God is speaking into Mary's life. God is speaking. With a very specific purpose. Very specific purpose. And I love what, what it says here. It says, because you, you have found favor with God. She has been chosen to do a purpose. You know what her purpose is? To give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. That's it. Does that not seem incidental to you? Wait a minute. You're, you're telling me that I'm going to give birth. You're going to use me and all my cavities to give birth to this son. And you want me to call his name Jesus. That, that's all you want me to do. That, that's it. That's all you want me to do. Does that not seem a little incidental to you? Does it? Where, where's the big flash in this? Where, where, where is all the, the hoopla about? Giving childbirth to this? 
But it all hinges around this one verse. Luke 1, 37. Because see, she wasn't intimate with the man. God, through the Holy Spirit, came down upon her. And that's how she conceived. And that's why I love this. Because that is impossible. Now, over the few years, I've learned a little things uh, uh, about uh, sex and, and about childbirth. Okay? And I, I, I've studied this. And we've been to all these classes and they try to teach you this in school and all this. You know how not to get pregnant? Don't have sex. Right? It cannot happen. Right? It, it, that is impossible. Right? Now I see these some girls like, but I didn't do it. Oh, boy. You did. Okay? Now they've got these little injection needles or somehow frozen stuff. and Somehow they can do this weird way. Okay? But you're still getting the goods there. But what we're saying is, is that it cannot be done unless you are together. I want you to get that. It's impossible. Right? It is impossible. I want you to understand that. That is impossible. Impossible. It cannot be done without sexual intercourse. It cannot happen. But not with God. You understand that? Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing, guys. And I want you to really hit that. Nothing. So God took this awesome miracle, gave it to this woman, and said, here you go. And she believed God was impossible. She never doubted God. I think she kind of got a little worried how she's going to tell her fiance. How would you like to go say that? Uh, I'm pregnant uh, by God. I'm not being with nobody, but you know, God came out of this angel bit me. That'd be a little weird, wouldn't it? Nice wedding present for you. Husband there. It's an awesome miracle. Awesome beer. And all she did was give birth and give him a name. That's what that was her job. Give birth and give him a name. Do this impossible task. But here's what I want you to understand. She said. This is verse 38. Fill it back up here. Verse 38. Here's what you to Here was her reaction to this. Okay? Here's her reaction. What she said to this. She said, May it be done to me according to your word. And then it was just like, and it was gone. Her faith carried that on. That was like the confirmation that was needed. It's awesome. Awesome, unbelievable faith. Where would we be without Mary? I think she could have tried to take her own life and she could have done a lot of things to get out of that. No doubt she had faced embarrassment. Could you imagine go up into your in-laws and say, uh, I'm pregnant. Or better yet, you're trying to hug up and you got, I don't know, I think they call them girls, you know, you're trying to do whatever you do to suck it in, you know, about belts, whatever you can. And you're going up to visit your in-laws and they're like, you look a little puffy there, you know. You and Joseph, y'all, what's going on there? It's like, no, actually, an angel came down and said that I'm pregnant with the Son of God. And we would then take her to this side because she was nuts, right? <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? I'm sure she faced embarrassment. Now, I I've seen enough pregnant women to know you can't really hide it that well, right? Now, I've seen some who, can't, who can hide a little bit better than others, but still, there's a form there. It's an awesome miracle. Awesome, I love childbirth. It's awesome to see this unbelievable experience take place. It's awesome. Awesome. I've seen these big, humongous football player grown dudes that cut down trees and chew tobacco cry whenever they're carrying their kids down the hallway. It's the most unbelievable experience that you could ever experience. I love it. I love it. It's an awesome miracle. And she says, I'll do it. Maybe done to me according to what you said. I'll do it. And she takes off. She's going on. She's carrying on her life. To give birth to the Son of God. Now how in the world does this apply to Mother's Day? We're talking about three women. Both related to childbirth, right? All three of them, they're all, all related to childbirth. But one was chosen. The other two does something we did. But here's thing that they all have three to come. I'll be able to come. I really want you to get this. They believe God for the apostle.
took it very seriously and they believed God for the apostle. They did. They did. Believe God for something far greater than they could have ever conceived in their own mind. Far greater. Do you, do you realize the potential of just your children or, or your grandchildren? Do, do, you, do you realize that Malachi could be the next Billy Graham? Do you realize that? Do you, do you realize the impact that, that just you investing in your family can have? Do, do you realize okay, our responsibilities that God has given us is unbelievable. I have no idea what the future holds for us. I have no idea what the future holds for our children or for our grandchildren. I have no idea. But if we invest in them with this one thing in mind, nothing shall be impossible with God. Guys, we're going to teach our kids that they can do anything. Guys, we can do anything when God's on our side. This one verse changed my life. Uh, we had Abby. She was uh, four years old. And uh, we'd been trying to have another baby, but we lost one. And then we found out we was pregnant with Eliana. And it was great. You know, it was great. Two kids. And something just didn't feel right. Uh, didn't know what, so we didn't do the things to prevent it. And uh, Eliana was just a couple months old, and we found out that we was expecting again. It was not the case. And uh, I remember when we found out, I mean, I made she cry. Because uh, it was close. And I'll never forget, you go to the doctor, and then Amanda just had this look on her face, and he said, listen, when your body learns how to make babies, it wants to make babies. And that's what he looked at us and said, like, okay, that's a little weird, but that's what he said. <laughs> and then Amanda went home, and she took this verse. She wrote on a post-it note, she stuck it on our refrigerator. So we can do this. You know what's nuts? After she was born, we still didn't do the stuff that you do to prevent having another baby. And so then, you know, uh, it was a little over a year later, uh, we lost her life. And then we got Caleb up. The people look at us now like, wow, you got four kids, you're nuts. They look at one and you got four kids, you're nuts. Uh, guys, you can do this. Here's what all this boils down to on Mother's Day. Here's, here's what I want to leave you with, okay? When you do what God wants you to do, because He wants you to do it, you are unstoppable. There's nothing. Along the way, you've got player haters out there that tell you you're not good enough. They're going to tell you that you can't do that. You're, you're going to have people tell you, like, are you crazy? You, you're raising a family, you're going to work, and you're going to school, and you're trying to start a church. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Like, you're nuts. Like, no, I believe God. I believe God because when we do what God wants us to do because He wants us to do it, <coughs> you are unstoppable. Unstoppable. Guys, I don't know, but that fires me up because with us getting with God, there is nothing that we can't do. That's the greatest thing that we can teach our kids. Guys, that's the greatest thing that us as adults we can learn. Because see, right now my kids, they want to be astronauts one day. They want to be, Abby wants to be the president of the United States. Uh, not one time have we told them that they can't do something. We're encouraging them. What we are saying, if that's what God wants you to do, we are all behind whatever it is God wants you to do. We fully support you. But guys, we have got to start believing God. We've got to stop believing what the world tells us. We've got to stop believing what we tell ourselves, right? You are fully qualified to do what God has called you to do. <coughs> Maybe your investment is that you are going to invest in your kids. Maybe that's it. All Mary had to do was to give birth and name Jesus. That was it. But look at the impact that Jesus made in our lives. That's wicked awesome. I have no idea what God's got in store for you or your kids or your grandkids. I have no idea. But here's what I do know. If you'll teach them this, God's going to use them. They're going to change the world. My question to you is, what do you need to believe God for? What do you need to believe God for in your life right now? Maybe, maybe God's telling you that you need to start believing in yourself. That you, that you can do this thing. That, that, that you can. 
Maybe God's telling you that you need to start doing a little bit more investment with your kids. Maybe God's telling you that He has got a wicked, awesome future for you. It's time to start believing Him. What is it that you need to start believing God for? Because guys, I believe this with all my heart. I'm not one of those feel-good people. Just last week was tough. We left and it was still tough. And I'm not just trying to build up and make you feel good. Like you can go out and conquer the world. But guys, again, when we do what God wants us to do, because He wants us to do it, guys, you're unstoppable. I want you to get you're unstoppable. Here's how much I believe in this, okay? I made these cards up. You know, all, all it's got, it's got that graphic on it, okay? It's got this greater sign and things. And if y'all notice anything that I've signed and things, I've been putting it on a greater thing. Because I'm looking for greater things. And here's why. Because of Luke 137. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. For with God, God said with for with God, nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing, God. Nothing. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take some of these. I want you to put them in your bathroom. I want you to put them on your mirrors. I want you to put them in your cars. I want you to put them in your refrigerator. I want you to put them anywhere where your eyes can see them. Because I want you to start believing God. I want you to start believing God. Whatever it is that God wants you to do, you are fully qualified to do it. It's time for us to start believing God. I want you to close your eyes just for a minute. And I can tell express in so many faces you know until you start believing God about it. Some of you guys are telling yourself you're not good enough. You are. You're telling yourself you can't do it. You can. You're telling yourself you're insignificant. You're telling yourself it's not good enough. Guys, it is perfect. You, you are exactly where God wants you to be. Doing exactly what God wants you to do. Now it's time for us just to start believing God. We can do this. We can finish this out. And we can do it exactly the way God wants us to do it. I'm ready to start believing God. So here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. What is it? What is it you need to start believing God for? What is it? I want you to fill in this blank. I need to believe God for... And you fill in the blank. What is that? I need to believe God for... What is it? I want you to fill that blank in. I want you to fill that blank in. I need to believe God for... Mine? I believe God can change Scott Kelly. I believe that with all my heart. That's what I live for. That's what I breathe for. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that. I believe he's going to do it. I believe God's going to change Scott Kelly. I believe he's going to change our lives. He already has. He already has. And this is a start. So what do you need to believe God for? Because here's what I want you to do. We're going to pray for the impossible. Remember those sons still still prayers we prayed a couple weeks ago? Now we're going to start believing God. Believe in God. <coughs> Are you ready to believe God for the impossible? So I want you to call to God right now. Right now. Just say, Dear God, here I am. Forgive me for my faults. Forgive me for my failures. I am ready to fully believe you. When I think that I can't do something, you say I can. So starting today, God, I'm going to believe you for the impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Father God, how awesome you are. And we claim this today. May it resonate in our hearts and in our lives. And may we be able to proclaim this today. And we've got this little note curse printed up, God. And I pray, God, that every time that our eyes hit this, that we're just going to see and trust you. God, Satan tells us we're not good enough. Sometimes, God, we tell ourselves we're not good enough. Sometimes, God, we let other people tell us that we're not good enough. We let them damper our hearts and damper our spirits, but not today, God. Today, we're going to stand strong and bold, and we're going to believe you. We have three awesome women who've done something completely, totally absurd. And, God, you came right through. God, that's exactly what we're going to do today. So I pray, Father, that starting today, on Mother's Day, 2013, that we take a stand 
and believe you are the impossible. Father God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.